Hi, I'm Milka Suarez and uh, this is the first model of introductory course of geostatistics of Technical, Lisbon University, my school. Uh, and you are going to talk about the very first stage of any geostatistical study, the exploratory data analysis. Exploratory data analysis ca can be viewed as a statistical toolbox to, to understand how the variables are dispersed, organized, structured, how they are related. But you are going to see uh, these statistical tools under a specific framework, a data-driven approach. This means that uh, any simple statistic you evaluate with your data, you must come back to the data just to, to assure it makes sense to your data and to the physical phenomena you are analyzing. In short, we are going to see how we can understand better my data set by calculating histograms, memes, variances, quartiles, etc. Today we'll talk about the way to describe the, our data through a histogram. Let us start to see the data. For example, data of a metal content from a mine site. This is a picture of a mining front of a copper deposit. We can see the bright veins of a calcopyrite, the copper ore. For example, to know how much copper we have there, we can start to take some samples. We have the location of those samples. We can analyze the samples in the lab and what we get is the copper concentration of those samples in a special location of those samples as well. Let's see another example. We want to characterize how much contaminated is a soil site. We can take some samples, the blue, cir the blue circles are the sample location, and we can analyze the, the, the pollutant concentration, the PB, and, and we have the representation, in this case, in a map. Different colors represent the chemical concentration of the pollutant. This is the starting point of our story. A set of values representing the phenomenon we wish to know. Here there are some questions. We'd like to get respe respective answers through exploratory data analysis and should give those answers with basic statistics. What is a typical value? What is the uncertainty around the typical value? What is a representative value? A certain histogram is partial representative of the study area. In short, exploratory data analysis should give answers to relevant and basic questions related to the characterization of the natural resource. Today, we'll, as I said, we'll talk about the way to describe our data through histogram, which is one of the most rich statistical tools to visualize and understand our data. Let us come back to the contaminated side, where we wish to characterize the most important natural drivers of the pollutants in the soil, the porosity, the permeability or transmissivity, and of course, contaminated concentration. For this purpose, we make some wells. From those wells, these are the representation of the wells in depth. From those wells, we take regular samples and analyze the porosity, permeability, and contaminant concentration of each one. This is a typical format of our raw data. We have uh, the spatial location of each sample northing, histing, depth, normally is, uh, it can be notated by X, Y, and Z, and the properties, the permeability, porosity, and uh, the pollutant concentration, PPMs. Now let's forget for the moment the spatial location, and let's look to the properties to mine the data, visualize, describe, and analyze. Let's, con let's consider a simple, small set of porosity samples, for example, those ones here. And we want to know how many values can be considered uh, <coughs> low porosity, with porosity, for example, lower than 0.1. 
or how many values have porosity between 0.1 and 0.2 and how many values have porosity greater than 0.2 this is called absolute frequency let's see first class starting by the first class what do we have we have one two three values here and the second class intermediate class greater than 0.1 lower than 0.2 what we have we have one two three four and the last class greater than 0.2 we have one two three okay this is called absolute frequency of each class but we can also calculate the, the, the relative frequency relative to the total number of samples in this case we have one two three one ten ten samples so it is easy to calculate the relative frequencies three over ten which is 0.3 uh, in second class we have uh, 0.4 and 0.3 we can also represent this relative frequency in terms of a diagram we can put in the hex x uh, the porosity classes values and in y x we can put the, the relative frequency and this is called a histogram now let's come back to the, our real data and we can divide can build as many classes we wish we'll see this criteria a little bit later and we also can have uh, we can calculate the absolute frequency relative frequency and can we have a cumulative frequency which is which give us the relative frequency of the limit of each class for example for example lower than 0.15 we have 0.36 uh, uh, of uh, the, the, community, the relative frequency of the samples, or well, 36% of samples are lower than 0.15. Okay, we can represent the histogram here, and also and, and the cumulative histogram. Now, related to the previous example, you can see, for example, the classes lower than 0.10 point in point 10 and point 20 and the class is greater than point uh, point uh, point two and uh, the relative the cumulative histogram give us straight away the proportion relative proportion or relative frequency of the values below for example point 10 but let's see uh, a more clear example of the of the histogram this is the histogram of our polluted concentration where we have uh, and we are interested sorry we are interested in two classes the clean area class the classes representing the clean areas which means the old values with pp concentration lower than 50 ppm and the contaminated areas definitely need remediation which we are those values with pb greater than 100 ppm if we go to the cumulative histogram you can take straight away the proportion of those two classes lower than 50 ppm we have I would say 50 percent and if uh, the samples are representative of the, this, the, the area the contaminated area contaminated site sorry we can say that we probably have 50 percent of this hair is clean do not need any remediation but and same way we can see on lower than 100 percent another ppm you have 90 percent which means that 10 percent of samples are really contaminated or 10 percent of the area needs remediation that's uh, the one main purpose of this cumulative histogram now it comes uh, another point, interesting point, of the number of classes of, of histogram. How many classes I should divide my histogram? Okay, let me tell you that there's no statistical rule to define the number of classes of an histogram for all situations. The number of classes of histogram must follow the two criteria. Normally, they are contradictory. The first criteria says that the histogram must contain the highest number of classes as possible. In order the relevant details of the variable dispersion are revealed. Point. Second, each class 
must have sufficient number of samples in order to be considered representative of the set of the data and consequently representative of the spatial domain from where the data was collected. That's why they are contradictory. So there's the, uh, in the balance of these two criteria, you should choose uh, the how appropriate number of cost of all Instagram. Now it comes the point, the most important point of, <coughs> of this model, how to interpret the histogram. Just to have, let's have a look to this very, very naive histogram. Here, simple histogram. And the idea is to have uh, the very first idea of the most frequented classes, how those classes are dispersed in the in the area the spatial domain that I'm studying. If my histogram uh, is bimodal, symmetric, asymmetric, like this one, and if it's asymmetric, for example, let me give you uh, just to understand how those how those extreme values are dispersed in the spatial domain for example if they are concentrated like this one or dispersed like this one this is totally different situations in terms of further steps of our course uh, like for example to predict values spatial values for example let's take a more uh, the, our case our example of the pollutant concentration the pb concentration and see <coughs> these extreme values how they are spatial dispersed they can be spatial dispersed like this one here with the pattern a continuous pattern or could be they can be dispersed like this one by erratic the pattern like salt and pepper and uh, let's have uh, let's have a zoom of those situations those two different situations in this case in most cases we have high uh, local uh, values local average values of pb but the difference in this case the the the, the high values uh, very close together which makes the variability a low variability which is totally different from this one. For example, take this, the first case here, and we can take four samples. And for example, those four samples are 150, 145, 153, 151. If someone asks you, what is the most probable value in the middle, for example? And the guess is not hard. That could be something, I would say, between uh, 145 and 153, straight away. Now let's see the other example, in a more erratic situation where the, close to a high value, we have a low value and so on. And let's take the four samples and we have 2.6, 2.4, 0.6 and 150, whoops. And if I make the same question, what is the most probable value in the middle? Well, in this case, the answer is not straightforward. The answer could be all possible values in the variable range. That's the main, the main difficulty of this case. In short, uh, we, <coughs> in short, we can you can say that this interpretation of histogram to see the dispersion of the values, how they are dispersed, how they are linked, come back to our 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 data, our physical phenomena, how they are linked to the physical phenomena, is one of the most important uh, step in the analysis of my histogram. Just to finalize, uh, here there are some common shapes of the distributions. Symmetrical histogram with moderate tails, symmetrical histogram with long tails, bimodal symmetric histogram, uh, histogram with tail to the left, tail to the right, and with outlier, etc. Just to finalize, I would like to give you a final note. For those who need even more basic level of these statistical tools, I strongly recommend 
the courses of Khan Academy on this side here.